I want to say, I, you know, I, I enjoy, uh, Brother Willie, I enjoy singing. Uh, when the Lord blesses, to me anyway, there's nothing like preaching. But I love to sing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really love it when it's, when it's uh, you know, we, and don't get me wrong, we, we all can uh, 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 like when it sounds good to the ears. Uh, some people just have a real gift to sing, but I really love it when it's from the heart. And uh, uh, that song that Brother Cornelius sung, I, I guess I started singing it. And then when he started singing it, I had to, I had to almost quit singing it because uh, I can't compete with Brother Cornelius on that song. And, and the reason is because it really comes from the heart. You know, and, and that speaks, you know, we, we can say things. And the Bible even speaks of it, about uh, how people will cling to the things that will have itching ears. And it'll, it'll be what sounds good to them. But man, whenever something speaks to the heart, Brother Willie, when something speaks to the soul, when something comes from, from deep down within and, and it bears witness with you, there's no sound like it. There's no feeling like it. There's just, um, and, and so, so I love... Um, I, I love it when, when Sister Barb and uh, Brother Cornelius, when you sing, because you know what? It's, 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 it's from the heart. It's from deep down in your soul. It's not just words on paper. And that's what I really, I, I try to get that across to people. It seems like on a weekly basis that this book here, this, this, this holy Bible that we read from, that we teach from, that we preach from, that, that sometimes I think uh, Sister Cindy just gathers uh, 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 dust uh, uh, on people's coffee table. This is not just words written on paper. Yeah. And, and if it just speaks to, to, to your ears, to your natural ears, you know, Jesus tells them, the, uh, he that hath ears, let him hear. Well, he was talking to everybody that had natural ears. That's not what he was talking about. He's talking about those spiritual ears. If you can open that up, if you can, if you can listen with your heart, if I can put it that way. And I'm not talking about this old stony heart. I'm, I'm talking about the heart that God can give you. you I'm talking about your soul, the, uh, uh, the spirit that's within you. That's where it needs to come from. When we tell people that you must believe from the heart, uh, you know, and the Bible says it. Now, I, I, I was, uh, I guess I was kind of tough on this the other day about, uh, you know, about uh, uh, people just saying, well, I believe, I believe. I, I, I hold true to what, uh, uh, to what I said, but maybe I need to be a little bit more clear on it because, the Bible tells us we must believe, and, and it does, and, and it goes on. There's several places. It, it teaches us, you know, uh, uh, that's what you must do. Whenever he was talking about, uh, uh, I think it was uh, 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 Philip uh, out with the, with the eunuch out there, and he hears water, what hindereth me to be baptized? If you believe, but not just naturally. It's like hearing with those natural ears, not just a natural belief. And I think people get that confused. They hear those words that all you have to do is believe. And it never fails because if I talk to people, uh, even with myself, Brother Willie, I believed in Jesus my whole life. But I didn't believe to the saving of the soul. There is a difference. And the believing to the saving of the soul, it brings forth action. You can't just sit back and say, well, yeah, I believe, but not repent. It's impossible. You have to. And if you leave repentance out, you're not talking about the belief that Jesus, that the apostles were talking about. How do I know? Because you know what? The apostles, they believed. Did they sit at home? Did they just sit back and do nothing? They were crucified. They were, they were beheaded. They were nailed to a cross. They were put in exile. They faced horrible deaths. But they didn't, uh, they didn't back away from it. They moved out on their faith. They truly believed. I know I say a lot of times, uh, uh, Brother Willie, that I use the example, if, if there was a bomb, if I said there is a bomb here and it's going to explode, um, and, and if uh, it's going to explode in, say, five minutes, well, if you truly believe the message, I don't think you're going to be in this building in five minutes. I believe you're going to, Make your way to the exit. You're going to leave this building. You're going to get to a safe distance if you truly believe. You know, um, the Bible speaks of in Matthew, it says uh, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter in. And then it gives some, some other things. 
there's people that, uh, Brother Cornelius, that, uh, that has done many wonderful works. It, it, it says that there was people who has cast out devils in his name. People that have prophesied in his name. You know what? It doesn't mention uh, that people stayed home in his name. That people neglected to read the scripture in his name. No, see, they're not fooling anybody. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that these is, uh, put a list up and say this. I'm saying, friends, that if you truly believe, you'll move out on that faith. You won't just stand there. It will produce something. You will confess. There's certain things that it just has to bring forth or it's not, it's not saving faith. It's not, it's not faith to the saving of the soul. It's not the same belief that these people are talking about in the Scripture. So I, I want us to understand that to, uh, uh, to, to, to put on our, uh, to get rid of our natural uh, feelings here and, and, and put that aside for a minute. And let's, let, let's go down into, into prayer, uh, uh, the, the way that we've been praying here from the heart, from the soul. I, I, I watch about saying from the heart because if you go into the scripture, the Bible teaches us something about our heart because I, I believe everybody has a heart. Uh, but you know what the Bible says about our heart? The Bible says that our heart is deceitful. It is wicked that nobody can understand it. So, so a lot of times we'll say uh, from the heart, but what we're really saying is from the depths of your soul, your true being, the, something that God has given you. You, you. you need to, whenever we say you believe from the heart, we're saying that you must believe, uh, friends, with every fiber in you. And we say you must repent, which means you must surrender. You must turn to him. You must do these things if you want to go into heaven. Because if you don't do those things, he will not born you again and make you a new creature. So I, I've, I've just got something here on my mind, uh, Brother Willie, and hopefully I, I can get it off pretty quick and, and let you come and, and, uh, and do what you got to do. But, but in Jeremiah, uh, uh, in chapter 13, uh, it, it speaks of uh, this. It's uh, just one little verse here. Uh, can an Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leper his spots. Then may ye also do good, and there are uh, a custom to do evil. Uh, 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 what this is, is this is the, the people of Israel. They were even being threatened, I guess you could say, or being warned, not threatened. Being warned of being, going, uh, being in captive, uh, uh, going back into uh, to, to captivity. But you know what? They had done evil for so long. They had done all these things. And you know, uh, I know I've heard, and Brother Willie, I've heard you preach about it, to, uh, that uh, people thinking that they'll just wait and live uh, 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 to, for themselves or live this way or that way, and then right at the time of death, oh, they'll just call out for a prayer and everything will be okay. You know what? But here it's teaching us, uh, uh, Sister Barb, that, that, that Israel had done uh, so wrong for so long that they had become hardened. And, and you know what? Uh, and it's teaching them here uh, that uh, uh, can they change uh, the color of their skin? Can uh, the, a leper change uh, the spots that are on them? And friends, listen, I, I want you to understand that we are that way. Uh, we, we have sinned and we've all come short of the glory of God. And there's not a one of us uh, that can recover on our own. Uh, friends, we don't have the capabilities. Uh, if, we, if we did have that capability, we don't need Jesus. Uh, but friends, Jesus, uh, friends, he came uh, to live the perfect life. Uh, he came and became sin. He took on my sin. He took on your sin. He took on the sin of the world so that we could have forgiveness and we could have life. And not just any old life, but everlasting life. Life that only he can give. Jesus said, I am the life. We can have that life. And friends, listen, if you've got that life, you've got it all. And so uh, uh, something was said uh, uh, here the other day, I think, that, uh, that kind of brought this scripture to me because uh, there was a, a saying back uh, uh, many years ago, and I don't know, maybe they still do it, but, but when a prisoner uh, is getting ready to go to, uh, uh, like, say, to, to the gas chamber or the electric chair or whatever it is their, their, uh, their punishment would be, their death sentence, as they was walking out, they, to go to their execution, they would yell out, dead man walking. And a lot of people I know have probably heard that. That's where it came from. Or, but that's what they would do. Is they, they, would, they would say that, Sister Bob. They would, they would uh, uh, announce it, dead man walking. And what that meant 
was that this man, even though he was still alive, he was dead. Condemnation was already declared upon him, and he was walking, uh, uh, friends, his last walk, and he was going, there was no escape. Uh, he was going to meet his uh, uh, death. Uh, there was no escaping it. That's it. Unless there, uh, Brother Willie, uh, by some great miracle, unless, uh, Brother uh, Cornelius, uh, by the mercies of someone who has the power, would grant him mercy, he was going to die. And so he was, by all sense, a dead man walking. And we've said it here before, and I know it's been preached here before, that, that people that uh, have not accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior, those that have not been born again, they are, in fact, dead people walking. And though they're up walking around, breathing the air, uh, friends, there is condemnation uh, that has already been pronounced on you. And the reason, if you find it in the book of John, the reason why is because you fail to believe, and that again being, uh, friends, from the very depths of your soul, you fail to believe in the Son of God. You fail to put your trust in Jesus Christ. And you're walking around without life. Again, Jesus said, I am the life. So if you have not accepted him in, if he has not come into your life, you are in fact a dead person walking. You're, on, you're, you're, you're marching toward your fate. You're marching toward your uh, uh, execution, if you want to put it that way. However you want to term it, you do not have life if you do not have Jesus. So today, friends, I want you uh, uh, to experience life. I want you to understand the Bible says it like this. Come and taste and see that he is good. I want you to taste of the Lord. See what he is offering you. Uh, friends, he's not uh, uh, trying to take anything away from you. He's trying to give you something. He's trying to give you everlasting life. And this can only be found by the blood of Jesus being applied to you. So today, I want to, again, get that up on your mind. Friends, uh, Jesus, uh, you know, we come here, and, I, and for the life of me, I don't understand, uh, Brother Willie, uh, uh, really why people hate Jesus so much, uh, uh, hate the uh, uh, Christians so much. Uh, you know, again, we're not here uh, trying to take anything away or, or trying to hurt you in any way. We're trying to let you know that you can have something that you don't deserve. You can have salvation. And it's free. We're not asking for your money. We're not asking for anything along the way. We're asking you to turn not to, to me or to this church or, or to confess this or that. We're asking you to, to turn to God, to surrender to Him. Confess to Him alone and accept His Son. Accept the sacrifice that was provided for you. Accept Jesus into your life. Let Him be Lord. Let Him be King. And I've heard people say uh, before, Brother Willie, well, maybe, maybe you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, but not as your King. Friends, listen, uh, that's that natural belief again. If you've not accepted Him as Lord, uh, you've not accepted Him as Savior. If you've not bowed down and surrendered to Him completely, He's not moved in. Uh, friends, this is an all or nothing thing. Uh, he doesn't want half of your life. He doesn't want half of your attention. He doesn't want 90%. Of what you're trying to offer him. He wants it all. And you'll either, you'll either surrender it all to him or you'll perish. I'm reminded of the, of the story in the Bible. Where Jesus, uh, you know, he was out praying. And, and he knew what was about to happen, friends. He was, he was about to give up his life. Him being God in the flesh. He was about to taste death for every man. And, and you know what? Uh, Peter was out there with him. And, and here they come, uh, 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 Brother Willie, they, they, they come, Judas had sold him out, and, and here he come, uh, uh, the Roman army out there, and, uh, I guess, and, and so uh, uh, Peter was not going to let this happen. Uh, you know what, this is a man uh, of friends who uh, here he was going to take out a sword, and he was going to fight the entire Roman army if he had to. He was going to defend Jesus. Uh, that's the natural man uh, that was puffed up in the flesh, and then let me tell you something about the flesh. Uh, the Bible says that the 
spirit is strong, uh, but what is the, uh, the flesh? Uh, the flesh is weak. Uh, here he was puffed up and ready to fight. It wouldn't, but just a few hours later, he denied even knowing Jesus. Denied even uh, uh, knowing anything about Jesus. As a matter of fact, uh, his whole speech had betrayed him. He had started uh, cursing people. I do not know this man. That was, that's the flesh. That's what the flesh will do for you. But friends, whenever uh, uh, Jesus enters into your life, you become a new creature. And the Spirit will always be strong. Uh, even in your weakest times. Uh, friends, why? Because Jesus is stronger. The Bible speaks of uh, that there is a strong man in you. But then a stronger man comes in. And he binds up the strong man. He casts him out and spoils these goods. And so, friends, you have a stronger one in you if you've got Jesus in your life. If you've got him on your, uh, on your bonds, in your soul. But here Peter had this sword, Brother Cornelius, and he took it out and he cut off the, an ear of, of a servant of the high priest. And, and you know, uh, I think about that whenever I think about uh, that saying, dead man walking. Because here you had uh, Peter who is uh, uh, no doubt trying to do what he felt like was right. How many times do we sit back and think, well, this makes sense to me. Sister Barb, this is the way I think we ought to do it because this makes sense to me. It better be here instead of here. Because there's a lot of things that made sense to me one time. But whenever I started denying myself and picking up the cross and following after Christ, I realized what made sense to me didn't always jive with this book. And something I've noticed all throughout the land, we have a lot of people calling themselves Christians but going against what Christ said. Going against what Christ stands for. If you're going to deny Christ, we shouldn't call ourselves Christ-like. If we're going to be Christ-like, let's take Christ at what he says. How Christ lives his life, we should live our life. That's the goal. That's what we should be doing. Not knowingly looking and saying, well, I don't have to do that. I don't have to go here. I don't need to do all these other things. All I need to do is just be a good person. Jesus was more than that. He never said, just be, be, just be a good person and you'll be all right. He told them to pick up the cross and follow him. And there's a reason why Jesus didn't own a big house here in this land. There's a reason why Jesus didn't have a nine-to-five job and, and a big bank account. You know, he had a treasury, if, if you know. He did. Everywhere he went, a lot of people says, well, he was just, a, he didn't have any money. He had a whole treasury. Judas kept that. And we know what Judas was. I want you to get the real thing. I want you to understand, friends, that Jesus loves you. He loves you, friends, more than you could ever understand. And here Peter, getting back to Peter, he, he had just uh, uh, committed this offense. He had cut off an ear of, the, of a servant of the high priest. And, and if I have to ask you, what do you think the, the penalty is for uh, 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 assaulting someone with a deadly weapon uh, uh, one of the Roman soldiers or someone with the Roman soldiers. That's a death sentence. In other words, Peter was dead man walking. And I like to always say this. You know, everybody sees the miracle that Jesus done here. Jesus knelt down and he picked that man's ear up and he put it back on and boy, what a miracle. Put that, put that ear back on and he was healed. He was complete. Not one scar. You couldn't see where nothing had ever happened. And everybody looks at that miracle and they say, oh boy, what a miracle. He put an ear back on, but friends, he did much more than that. Uh, what he did for Peter, uh, friends, uh, he didn't just do it to, uh, for, uh, for one. He did it for Peter. And what he done, uh, uh, Sister Cindy, was he took uh, that ear and and he put it back on that servant. Uh, friends, he was taking that death sentence away uh, from Peter. A uh, Peter who was a dead man walking uh, now was given life. There was absolutely nothing Peter could do. Uh, Peter was helpless in this case. Uh, he couldn't put the ear back on. He couldn't make up for what he'd done. He had committed something, uh, friends, that was uh, giving him a death sentence. But Jesus, with his mercy, uh, friends, uh, with all of his glory... He 
he uh, took that death sentence away from Peter. Uh, so friends, uh, what did Jesus do uh, when he marched up Calvary? Uh, Brother Cornelius, what did he do uh, when he stretched forth his hands? Uh, friends, what did Jesus accomplish uh, friend, whenever he gave up the ghost, when he commended his spirit to the Father? Uh, friends, listen, uh, what he done was he took that death sentence away from us. And when he come out of that tomb, Brother Willie, he was giving us an opportunity to have something that we could not obtain on ourselves. He was giving us the opportunity. He was giving us something. He was giving us hope. He was giving us a way uh, that we could have life and have it more abundantly. And you don't have to wait till you cross over Jordan to receive it. Uh, friends, you can get it right here. You can get it right now. God has done this for you. If, he, if you have accepted Jesus and you've got that down in your heart, friends, you should raise up your hands and give him thanks. Uh, don't give us thanks. Uh, don't give the, uh, this church thanks. Or don't give all the thanks to Jesus. Because he performed a miracle right in your heart. He took the stony heart out, Brother Willie, and gave you a heart of flesh. Uh, friends, he moved in, casting out all the wickedness, all the wickedness that your heart had, all that the strong man had, he spoiled. And Brother Cornelius, he gave us something new, something better, something everlasting. He did it for Peter naturally. He does it for us, Brother Willie, spiritually. He that him, him that have uh, ears to hear, let him hear. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear the message of Jesus. Jesus loves you. He's not here to take away. He's here to give. I said, I don't understand how people hate the name of Jesus. But I guess I do understand. I was once one of them. Even though I believed that he was the son of God, I wanted nothing to do with it. Because every time the name Jesus was mentioned, it seemed like I had to look at myself. And you know, I hear that all the time whenever I tell people, Brother Willie, that, well, you know what, you, you, you know, we don't need to be doing this, we need to be, in, and, and no doubt there's several things that, that come to mind that, that they'll do. One of them is, uh, uh, well, you're not perfect, you know, well, that's true, I'm not. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. I, I've never claimed to be perfect. The one that moved inside of me is perfect. The one that moved inside of me, he was the one that enrolled my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. I couldn't do it. I tried. He is the one that made me a fit subject for heaven, not me. So I, I have to say, yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not perfect. I, I, I make many mistakes. I fail daily. But Jesus is right there daily. No matter what I do, where I go, Jesus is there with me. No doubt they'll also say uh, that, that, well, you, you're not to judge me. And friends, I'm here to tell you, we make judgments every day. I mean, right down to the food we eat. It's like me saying, Brother Willie, why well, I can't stand that food. That's awful. That's, that's a judgment. I, I, don't, I may not like the way this looks or the way this tastes or, or the way this feels. We make judgments every one of us every day. The Bible teaches us that we're not to judge someone's soul. I don't know if somebody's going to heaven or not. I do know what the scripture teaches. And I know if you've not been born again, that you're going to go to hell. And you can say I'm a judging, but I'm making a righteous judgment there. God, Jesus himself, he'll, he'll be the one that'll, that'll say come or go. I, I want you to, to hear the words come. I don't want to hear you say depart from me, ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you. I don't want you to hear that. I certainly don't want to hear it. I want to hear come, you blessed of my father. I want everybody to hear that. How great would that be? One of the things that they'll also say, Brother Willis, that, that God is my judge, not you, you know. God judges me. And they say it as if, I, I don't understand, I've never understood that. Do you realize that God is sovereign? If I judged uh, you on something, Sister Barb, there ain't no way I could, I, I, I would let you slide on things. God's not going to let you slide. I promise you, he's going to make the righteous call. He's going to, just like in the days of Egypt, 
You know, he, he looked uh, whenever he had them uh, put the, uh, the blood over the door and down the mantle. And you know what, uh, friends, if he saw the blood, he passed over. If he did not see it, friends, death came to that home. It made no difference what your uh, social status was, how many followers you had on Twitter or Facebook. It made no difference uh, how much money you had. Or uh, You look at Pharaoh, the most powerful person, natural person in the land. Uh, uh, I guess you could say it, it didn't pass him up. Uh, friends, death came to his home too. It makes no difference what you uh, think about this or, or what uh, this person says about it. You better be concerned what this book teaches. This book teaches you to have the Spirit of God in you or you are none of His. So I don't want you to fall on something short. I don't want you to follow after man. I don't want you to follow after your own heart. That the, again, the Bible teaches us is wicked. You know, back in Genesis, it tells us that's why God destroyed the earth the first time. Because the imagination of men's heart was deceitful all the time, was evil, wicked all the time, continuously. Amen. And friends, it's going to happen again. So, in my parting words, I want you to get Jesus right down in your heart. I want, to, I want you to get him right down in your soul. You have to do this through, you must believe. You must believe. Don't just leave it at just a knowledge, acknowledgement, or a, a head belief, or a natural belief. True belief. I believe the writer said, faith without works is dead. Now, we're not saved by our works. We're saved because we believe upon the name of Jesus Christ, this only begotten of the Father. But it's a saving faith. You get that through Repentance. And that's not suffering. That's not uh, uh, going through and, and waiting 10 years or what. No, that is surrender. Yep. Complete surrender to Jesus. I had a saying, I guess, back in, in those days, uh, it would be like, your will, my hands. It's what servants would say to their masters. And that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. Your will, my hands. That's what Jesus did. That's what he said to the Father. He, not my will, but thy will. And then he moved out and did the will of the Father. So I want you to go to heaven. I want you to have peace in this life. You'll never have it apart from Christ. 